Well, we did the pasta. Now yeah. we need the wine to go with it on this National Pasta Day. Renee Allen is the founder of the Wine Institute of New England. She's also a certified specialist of wine. She's here to talk about a pairing wine with different pasta dishes. It's so nice to have you. Nice to be here. Thank you, guys. You Happy gospel pasta choir day. singer, you. <laughs> oh, no, let's not get into that. <laughs> That's a whole other story. That's She's a whole other talent. <laughs> so, All right, so we're, <laughs> we're talking wine today. Wine and pasta, yes, and um, there's a lot to say about it. A student in one of my wine classes last week asked me, what do you pair? Well, how do you pair wine and pasta? Okay. And the short answer is you don't. Really? Which sounds kind of funny. But pasta is more of a backdrop, of a canvas. And when we, there's a lot of pairing philosophies and rules, but basically the idea is to make the wine and the food taste their best and elevate the whole experience. Okay. And to do that, when you pair wine with a dish, you want to pair it with the most dominant flavor. That's never the pasta. Pasta okay. is like a delicious, yummy backdrop, as I said, but it's not the main component. So in this case, it would be the butternut squash. Right, so we just had that beautiful butternut squash ravioli made. And actually, the first wine we're starting with would pair beautifully with that. It's a Suave Classico from the Veneto region in Italy. And um, this is going to be one of those cases where regional pairings make sense. What grows together goes together. We import more wine from Italy than from any other country in the United States, and there's a reason. It's very food friendly, high acid, usually lower in alcohol, very versatile for pairings. So Suave Classico, I'm sort of highlighting that today. Okay. I want everyone to like give up their Pinot Grigio just for a week and try Suave Classico instead. If you guys want to try this, sure. you'll see. But it Cheers. would be, if you're used Cheers. to Pinot Grigio, this would be a good um, thing to put in. It's going to have some similar qualities. Try it and we'll talk about it. Mm. It's, good. it's still very light, but maybe a little bit more flavor. Yes, it's a little bit richer. So it's got um, some fresh fruitiness. It also has a lot of minerality and a hint of herbaceousness, which I think would match perfectly with the sage that's in the pasta. Okay. And it does have weight from something called malolactic fermentation. So this is a good kind of wine to pair with anything that has pasta that has just like garlic, oil, um, some butter, and herbs, like so plainer pasta. I think we've got a, a picture of also like the kind of pasta a lot of us make at home with pasta and red sauce. Red. Is there a rule like red sauce, red wine? Well, we're, well <laughs> yes and no, as I always say. So there's different kinds of red sauces. If you're doing a fresh red sauce like a pomodoro, you could definitely go with a white like this Verdicchio here from the Marche region. It in Italy, um, that would stand up fine to fresh tomatoes. Once you start to get into cooked tomatoes, like a marinara, that's when I start to move into the reds. Um, and again, we do a lot of Sicilian style red dishes. So I've got a Netto d'Avola from Sicily and an Etna Rosso. These grapes actually grow on the slopes of an active volcano, the Etna volcano, which is pretty darn cool. Now, they're going to be weighty enough to stand up to tomatoes, um, and they're going to have enough acid, because tomatoes are very high in acid, yeah. so that'll make a nice pairing, but they're not over the top with anything like tannins or high alcohol. Also, a Barbera, Dalba, what, it's one of my favorite pizza wines. That'll work really nicely oh, with red oh, sauces. That's good. Okay. And again, when you move into things with meats, you right want here. slightly. That's the Barbera, that's, yes. This is if you're having yeah. pizza. A lot of people pizza. order pizza <laughs> maybe on a Wednesday. Then I wine down Barbera. Wednesday. This is a good yeah, pizza wine. Yeah, it's a wine. nice high acid wine that works perfectly Screenshot with tomatoes. Screenshot your screen right now. <laughs> right. And again, with the Bolognese, the lasagnas, meatball spaghetti, any of these would work perfectly. There's a whole list of other reds that would go, um, but we're going to move on. Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing pasta uh, with a cream sauce, uh, with, like a fettuccine alfredo uh -huh. or a penne alla vodka, then you want to do something. I like to pair weight with weight in that case. So I want like an oaky chardonnay or maybe a rich viognier or a chenin blanc to go with a cream sauce. If I'm doing seafood, I want something totally different. I want a high acid, um, bright wine like this muscadet, which is actually from France, not Italy. So that'll pair well with some of your like linguine and clams. Beautiful. Dish, yeah. I like that. And then if you move into the herb pasta dishes, like a pesto or a pasta primavera, but especially pesto, I love a Spanish albarino okay. with pesto. It just makes a great this pairing. This one right here. Yes. Again, okay. high acid, um, and it does have a lot of uh, vegetal quality to it. It'll pair beautifully with pesto, because pesto can be a little challenging to pair wines with sometimes. Okay. Um, and then just to conclude, like with the regional pairings, I have a uh, Vernaccia di San Gimignano, which is from Tuscany. Uh, also, I didn't bring one today, but Chianti, obviously the most famous from Tuscany. Chianti. If you're doing like a bean dish, like fagioli, which is traditional yeah. Tuscan, I just had a Did you have a I just think of yeah. yeah. the yeah. lambs, Chianti yeah. and If you want beans. white, you can do <laughs> Vernaccia. If you want red, I would do Chianti, and that that would work perfectly. And then a little trick for people at home who are trying to pair. Um, if you put wine in the dish, that's the wine you can drink 
Oh, oh, seriously? With the dish, yes. And a lot of people, you know, it says a lot of times in recipes, and I know you would echo this, that we shouldn't buy cooking wine. Cook with wine that you would actually Thank drink. Thank you, yes, absolutely. I, I did not know that. I never use um, cooking wine. Yeah, okay. if it's, it's got to be something that I would be happy sipping while I'm cooking. But then that's you what just I put use in. that wine. That's what I put okay. in, yeah. So you, and that's called echoing or bridging. So that's a good way to make oh. a pairing work better as well. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. I didn't know that. This, I have to, you know, as you know, Renee, you know, my, my taste buds We're for We're working wine. on you. We're working on it. <laughs> this is absolutely delicious. It's delicious. This is a really delicious wine. I and really enjoy this. I have to say this. about Suave, it was so popular like very uh, many decades ago and it got too popular and yeah. they expanded the zone of vineyards and it um, got diluted I, I, but they're back on the... I've, I've never tasted anything yeah, quite like that. It's the minerality mm. in this one is really nice. Great. Yeah, they're back on track. Go. Yeah, so they're All doing right. a lot of good Thank things. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks, my Renee. pleasure. Happy pasta day. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> to learn more about Renee and the wine courses that she offers, you can head to her website. It's wineinstituteofnewengland.com. All right, coming up next, 15 years ago, five gay men created a hit TV show called Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Fast forward to 2018 and there's a new Fab Five dishing design advice and we are talking to one of them on the other side of this break so stay with us.